Mr. DJ back on the countdown. How you doing? Fancy Playlist, October 17th, 1993. A massive comeback hit for me, Loaf. This is going back to his first album, Bad Out of Hell, except this album was called Bad Out of, Bad Out of Hell Part 2. Uh, the album, Back in the Hell. <laughs> Sort of tongue in cheek, produced by Jim Steinman. The song "I Would Do Anything, But I Won't Do That." The melodrama, the the fury, the passion of Meat Love coming into play, and you got that that stellar Jim Steinman production uh, shoring up the record big time. Lorraine Crosby, a British singer, she sings on this record. I'll get into her in just a minute, but give her a little bit of credit on this record. A lot of people don't know about her. Wound up doing some research on Lorraine Crosby. But uh, this album, uh, Back, at, Back Out of Hell Part 2, or 2, came out in 1993. God, I tell you, 40 years ago. It's been 40 years since I first heard Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Another epic, an epic record. Probably one of the most underrated epic records of all times. One of the most underrated. Paradise by the Dashboard Light, about seven or eight minutes long. Just a great storytelling song. Teen, teenage, well, <laughs> hanky-panky fooling around. and Brilliantly done with the uh, meatloaf and Ellen Foley. She did the female vocals on that record, written by Jim Steinman. And you know, when I think about Jim Steinman, I also go back to another song he did. I don't know if anybody remembers the song he did back in the summer of 1981. Oh, gosh, it was called The Dreams Are Years Forever, but Rock and Roll will Never Forget, something like that. A great production by Jim Steinman. But let's get to this album, Jim Steinman and uh, Bat Out of Hell Part 2, Back into Hell by Meat Love. I would do anything. I love the title of this song, but I won't do that. <laughs> Number one in almost 30 countries. Went to number one on Billboard's Hot 100, and this song was a major smash all over the world. It just it just shattered the glass ceiling all over the world. Number one in Austria, Belgium, Ireland, Iceland, Sweden, Norway, Germany, Netherlands. Number one in England. No surprise there. Let's talk about Lorraine Crosby, the woman who sings on this record. And by the way, she did not appear in the video. Dana Patrick, a woman named Dana Patrick, let sync the vocals in the video. Lorraine Crosby was a British singer. She teamed up with a guy named, his name was Stuart Emerson. Stuart Emerson was a British musician. He had a band, and he asked, he won her in his band, basically a backup singer or just another singer. See, the thing is, Lorraine Crosby, she sang in a five-piece cabaret band back in the 80s. They were touring military bases, uh, singing for American and British servicemen or service people. And she joined this band, but they started writing songs together. Lorraine Crosby and Stuart Emerson. Let's set the stage for what's going to happen writing songs together, and uh, they became a couple. They sent some of their demos to Jim Steinman in New York. Jim Steinman, hey, your demos are killer. They are splendid. Let's meet. Stuart Emerson and Lorraine Crosby, they go to New York. Then... Jim Steinman goes to Los Angeles, and they follow Jim Steinman to Los Angeles. Jim Steinman became their manager. He became the manager to Lorraine Crosby and Stuart Emerson, songwriters, singers, musicians. They stayed at the Magic Hotel. Emerson and Lorraine Crosby stayed at the Magic Hotel. That's where Meatloaf's musicians stayed at until they found something more permanent, permanent to live in. Jim Steinman came their manager, he got them a record deal with Meat Loaf's, Meat Loaf's label, MCA. Lorraine Crosby, she was out and about one day. She popped into the recording studio on Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. Meat Loaf was recording. And the song, I Would Do Anything. Lorraine Crosby was asked, how would you like to provide guide vocals 
to this track. So she sang. And she sang on back up on some of the, some other cuts, several other cuts on Meat Loaf's album. The album comes out, the song comes out, some major smash, but no royalties for Lorraine Crosby. She was not credited on the album, except the credit was to Mrs. Loud. And she did come out with an album called Mrs. Loud in 2008, her debut album, Lorraine Crosby. But she and Stuart Emerson returned to England almost penniless, not really making any money from singing with Meatloaf. The reason why they were not given any royalties was because she was technically... I don't know how to, I don't, I can't quite figure this out, but I'll do my best to explain it. She was not technically a backup singer. She only provided guide vocals. Well, there it is. Lorraine Crosby, boy, she, she nailed it. Fantastic singer on this record. The back and forth between her and Meatloaf, priceless on this record. Meatloaf, I would do anything, but I won't do that. At number 17 on my fantasy playlist of, and I forgot one other thing, the female part of this record. Guess who was considered to do the female part? I mean, Lorraine Crosby was up against some competition. She, Bonnie Tyler was considered. Melissa Etheridge and Cher. They would have done fantastic on this record as well. They were considered by Lorraine Crosby forever immortal in this record, even though not financially compensated. I would do anything, but I won't do that. Meet Loaf at number 17 on my fancy playlist, October 17th, 1993.